Hello my classy people, how y'all doing? Wayne Bolden from the Speed King channel. As always, I ask that you turn your closed captures on, that way you can see the narrative of each horse that we're speaking of. And of course, our tip sheet for both Friday and Saturday at Pimico is available. Email us at speedking24 at yahoo.com, speedking24 at yahoo.com. Of course, well, this year's Preakness race number 13, it's a field of nine. You know some of the actors, they're going to model in 316th for $1.5 million. This should be a very interesting race. I know it looks like that there may be some late closers, but I'm here to tell you, these horses, the way they break may be the way they finish across Pimlico Racecourse. Let's dive right in. Don't want to take a bunch of time. The analysis should be straightforward and simple. We have an opinion. The number one horse simplification, everybody knows simplification. Very nice colt in his own right by not this time. Of course, three wins from eight starts, one second and two thirds, and finished fourth in this year's Derby two weeks ago behind Zandon and, of course, Epicenter, right? And again, Rich Strike. Now, he had every chance to make up more ground uh, simplification, but he just couldn't. So I don't know why he would be able to beat a horse like uh, Epicenter in this race either. So I do not like simplification. No shape, no form, no fashion. I'm throwing the number one horse off the ticket for sure. The number two horse, well, here's the wise guy horse, a local horse, creative minister, right? Two wins from three starts in one second. I get it. They paid 180000 for this horse at the 2020 Kingland sale. McPeak and McPeak. That's right. And got Brian Hernandez in the arms. I get it. This horse is just not fast enough, folks, right? The number two horse, local horse or no local horse. Ten to one on the morning line. Throw him off the ticket. Out the number two. Well, Fenwick, well, nothing has changed here. I can't throw him out no faster than I threw Simplification out or Creative Minister. The number three horse is seriously overmatched here. Exits the Bluegrass Stake Race uh, behind Zandon and Smile Happy. He's just not good enough. He's 50, he's 50 to 1, and he should be. The number three horse, Fenwick, is seriously overmatched. Well, Here's the girl. She, one of them is back in town. Secret Oath ran a beautiful race in the Kentucky Oaks. We all seen it, and we were all shocked that we got 4-1 to one on the horse. I think we all made money that day. Well, Secret Oath don't need no introduction by me. Drew a beautiful post position, trained by the coach, D. Wayne, five wins from eight starts and two seconds. So again, I heard a couple talking heads saying, hey, this horse may run the way that Rachel Alexander ran in the Preakness. Let's not do that. Let's not be comparing Secret Oath to Rachel Alexander. That is not even close, right? But anyway, the horse is bred like you know, all get out by Arrogate on the back end by Quiet American, who could run all day. Now, you got Louis Saez, you're going to get a Rolex ride, that's for sure. Do I think that uh, Secret Oath can hit the board? I absolutely do. Do I think she's going to win this race? I absolutely do not. She would have to sprout wings to get around both the two horses that I believe is a cinch to win this race. So, at best, I would put uh, Secret Oath third. I don't think she can win this race. She's not nearly fast enough. I don't care how much turn of foot she has. The two big horses in here are extremely, extremely fast by two or three speed figure numbers, for sure. Secret Oath, third or fourth. Number five horse, well, 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 you don't need the bullet if you got the ballot. I want you to vote early and vote early, right? Number five, early voting, and there may be trouble in bedrock, mama. That's what I said, y'all. Hey, listen, let me share something with you. This horse is fit, this horse is fresh, and this horse is ready very fast. This horse was ready to go in the derby right? And I want to tell you something. Chad Brown is just an awesome, awesome, classy, and smart young man. He did not like that pace scenario the way that it could manifest before the race. And there's only one thing that early voting do, you know, speed and more speed and then some more speed. And he was absolutely right. It would have compromised all the chances on this horse, and he would have added to the chaos in the derby. So they scratched him, uh, this horse, and somehow Chad Brown, I believe, 
convince the owners to wait and see here because it was the wrong race in terms of pace scenario. Well, that's not the case here on Saturday. Early voting, to me, has every right to control this race from gate to wire. That's what I said. Okay, this horse is fresh. This horse is fit. This horse is coming back in 42 days. Has two wins from three starts in one second. They did pay 200000 for this horse in the 2020 Keeneland sale. And did I tell you his daddy was gun runner? That's right. On the back end by Tiz now. No, you didn't. I just said it. This is a special, special horse. I think he's going to be very special in the future, particularly when this horse becomes a four-year-old. You got Jose Ortiz in the arms and I tell you right now this horse is sitting there on a six week uh, freshening and he's taken on a horse that's returning out of a brutal race in two weeks this horse is sound fit and fresh and ready to go okay and I'm telling you right now early voting at seven to two is a huge huge contender in this race for sure Happy Jack. Well, I don't know how happy Jack's going to be, but it's O'Neill back on the scene, right? One win from five starts by Expo on the back end by uh, Tappet. This horse comes out of the Kentucky Derby, fourth by 19. Why are we discussing this horse? Unless he catch lightning in the bottle, you know, like Fenwick, the number three, he should be 50 to one too, Happy Jack, the number six. Let's throw him off the ticket. Armanac. No, the number seven horse. Let me share something with you about this horse. Quality road horse. Two wins from five starts. Here's Jack Teen again. He's not doing that well with these here Baffert runners, is he? Well, I tell you right now, this horse is kind of speedy. I don't think he can get in front of early voting. Or do I think he can get in front of Epicenter? I don't. But I do think he'll be sitting in the third or fourth seat now. Okay, and this horse is improving over time by Quality Road and Lemon Drop Kid. I wouldn't leave this horse 12 to 1 off of any exotics underneath for sure, the number 7, Army Nat, and has the services of Irad Ortiz. The number 8 needs no introduction. It's my guy, Asmussen, all the time. Epicenter or Epic Center, however you want to pronounce it, folks. Okay, the number 7 horse has four wins from the number eight horse has seven, uh, seven starts and four wins in two seconds for 1.6 million. Everybody knows the deal here. The horse is by not this time, as well as simplification is by not this time. Epic Center is six to five on the morning line, rightly so, because he did look like a derby winner about 10 jumps from home until Rich Strike struck it rich up the rail. Okay, so this horse is gonna be seriously over bet on Saturday, six to five on the morning line, on his way to two to five for sure. Now, here is my concern, okay? My concern is you always hear me cry about rest. I don't care that it's my guy, Asmussen. I'm telling you to run a mile and a quarter and to turn around and come across the country, or halfway at least, in two weeks to tackle a horse like Early Voting who is fresh, sitting there, fresh, fit, and ready to fire, is a big, big ass. Okay, I'm just telling you, these horses need rest, and I know that's not the Triple Crown makeup, you know, two weeks and then three weeks to the Belmont. I get it. But it doesn't change the fact that this is a fast turnaround for any horse in two weeks coming out of those brutal races, the only one of its kind, like the Kentucky Derby. And this horse ran his eyeballs out. Now, should this horse be the favorite in here? Absolutely. Is he the likely winner in here? Absolutely. Is he going to be two to five? Absolutely. Am I interested in backing this horse at two to five? I am not. Okay, and here is why. I think he ran a top. He ran a huge top, his best number that he's ever ran in his life out of the Derby. Not only is he back in two weeks, but he has every right to funky bounce. He has every right to regress. Now, he won't regress that much because the rest of the field is so bad, his worst race beats most of these hands down. So you're not going to see him bounce over Pimlico or over the, Mer the state of Maryland. But this horse do not have to run a top race off of that two-week return, coming off of a top effort on the sheets. And everybody that's a sheet reader, let it be Raggison and or the Theragraph, know what I'm talking about. When you have a top effort, chances are you could match it, but you usually regress. That could be the case here. But don't get it twisted. This is the right horse. The likely winner in the race will not be my top pick in here, particularly at two to five. 
there's not a man alive. I'm not betting no two to five or three to five. I think the horse is going to react. Has every right to win. They got the right horse as the favorite. In my opinion, I'm going to try to get around for sure. Epic Center, at worst, will be my second pick in here with every chance to win this race. The number nine horse, well, the Skippy Long Stocking. Well, check out the old Long Stocking horse. Two wins from nine starts. Saffy Joseph, you're in a bunch of trouble here, Mr. Saffy. Well, the horse actually didn't run that bad in the Wood Memorial behind early voting. He was beaten by three and a half minutes by early voting. His problem today is he shouldn't be wide. It's a mile and three sixteenths. And he does like to make up ground. He's 20 to one. Hey, the horse has improved each and every one of his starts. He does have two wins, and he has Alvarado in the yard. So if you're using this horse in tries and supers at 20, 25 to 1, the number 9, skippy long stocking, I'm not mad at you. So there is your analysis for this year, Preakness, and this is what your Speed King is telling you. I think early voting is sitting on a big, big race here, folks. I think this horse is going to go gate to wire. Now, having said that, uh, Epicenter is fast too. He can get out the gate and he will be sitting right behind him and will have the first jump. It would not surprise me if the way these horses broke is the way they finish. I don't know if simplification is going to be making up any ground because they may just control the pace in such a way where the horses that we think are going to close into it can't do it. And that would mean simplification and secret oath and anybody else you can come up with who you like to see run down the lane late. So in my opinion, early voting has every right being fresh, fit, and ready to go to control this race and will be my top pick and actually is my best bet in terms of value. At 7-2, to two, I hope we get that. I hope they uh, bet secret oath who we're not crazy about. But we like uh, early voting in this spot, and it is our top pick. Our second pick, obviously, I don't need to tell you, obviously, is the horse they all have to beat is Epicenter. You don't need me to handicap Epicenter for you. What you do need is better odds on Epicenter to play him. Okay, two to five, three to five, there's nothing there. Okay, and the horse has every right to regress off his last race and has every right to be a little tired without a freshening off of two weeks. Now, can Steve Asmussen get them ready? Yeah, but these horses are flesh and blood. They're not machines. So at two to five, I'm not willing to take a chance on top on a horse, you know, on Epicenter. Now, if I play pick threes and pick fives, he probably will be on my ticket. But my best bet in this race is early voting for sure. And my third pick here, I'm going to go out on the limb a little bit. I'm going to take the number seven, Army Knack. I think this horse is fast and is improving. I think he'll be sitting right behind early voting and uh, epicenter. And they may, again, the way they break may be the way they finish. So our third pick will be the number seven horse. I'm not crazy about simplification, and I'm not that thrilled about Secret Oath in this spot. I throw them both off the ticket. Can you use them underneath? You sure can. I'm not. All right. My pick is going to be early voting, the number five horse. We're going to bet a significant amount of money on this horse. We think it is our best bet or one of the two best bets of the day. Our second pick will be Epicenter, and our third pick will be the number seven, Army Nat, right? So it's five, eight, seven in this year's Preakness. Let me know what you think, folks. That's where I said I threw Simplification off the ticket as well as Secret Oath. I threw her off the ticket, or at least my ticket. Five, eight. Seven, in that order, we think early voting is going to go gate to wire, and our money is going to back that this horse go gate to wire. We think he's special. Watch out, y'all. We're betting to win. Talk to y'all. Let me know. Let's get good dialogue going. Stay classy in everything you do. If those folks go low, you keep it 100. You keep it classy. You have a bunch of fun on Preakness Day for sure, as well as Friday. Email us, speedking24 at yahoo.com for our tip sheet. That's right. We think early voting is going gate to wire. You don't need the bullet when you got the ballot. Vote early, vote often. Number five, gate to wire. That's what I'm calling for. Talk with y'all folks. Let me know what you think. Stay classy, y'all.